Hello everyone, welcome to TNE Garage. Today we'll be working on, again, my 2020 BMW M340i X Drive. We'll be changing the transfer case fluid, which is one of the most overlooked items in maintenance process. Uh, we'll be using the DTF1 from OEM BMW that's specific for transfer case fluid. In this case, we'll lift up the vehicle as level to the ground as possible before we begin. And the next step, at least for me, is going to be removing the undercarriage splash shield, which is shown right here. I don't think necessarily it's something that you need to remove when you're replacing your transfer case fluid, but I'm also doing a transmission fluid change on my car at the same time. So it will be essential for me to remove this as well. You will have a better visual of what's going on with transfer case. After you get the splash shield to be removed, now you are looking at the transfer case mating with the transmission. Particularly, this is its cross member. For this video's sake, I'll be removing the cross member simply because you will have a better visual of what's going on when I'm extracting the old fluid as well as refilling the system with new fluid. Realistically speaking, if you have a short Allen key that's 14mm, you don't necessarily have to remove the cross member, but it will be easier for you to access everything that you need to do. And since this cross member holds on to the weight of the transfer case and the transmission, you will want to jack it up ever so slightly with the surface right here. That way you're supporting the weight of the transfer case and the transmission so that you will be able to actually remove the cross member or else it's going to be very, very difficult if not even possible at all. You can see here I'm trying to adjust the hydraulic jack to make sure I'm jacking up by the most flat surface um, so that you can have an even distribution of the weight. And after the load or the weight of the transmission and transfer case is supported by hydraulic jack, you can see here I am undoing all the bolts that's holding down the cross member in place. There are five external torques, I believe they are all E10, holding down the cross member in place, as well as a big bolt and a nut that's 16 and 18 millimeter on each side. Be mindful of the order you took out the external E10 Torx bolts from the cross member because they are of different sizes in length. On the passenger side, you'll have three bolts in total. On the driver's side, you'll have two bolts. And from this camera angle, the longer ones go to the bottom left corner and the shorter one goes to the top left corner as well as on both bolts on the driver's side. After you've removed all the E10 bolts, it's time to undo the main bolt and nuts. It's 16mm on one side and 18mm on the other side. It's a rather tight fit area. You may have to use a combination of a deep socket as well as a shallow socket on both sides to see which one fits the best. And since the bolt goes through a flexible bushing for the transfer case mount, here you can see I'm struggling to find the right angle to level the bolt to get it out and the camera actually tilt over as well. And after some struggling, you can see the mount is currently off or the cross member is currently off. We're looking at the transfer case. We're looking at the mount off. And you can also see going back up at the car, the jack is supporting the weight of the transfer case and the transmission coming from the front of the vehicle. If we move over to the driver's side, you will be able to see this is your fill plug for the transfer case. Since the cross member or the transfer case mount is currently off, you won't be able to see, but there actually is a little bit of an opening. Even if with the mount on, you can still use a short Allen key to get the fill plug loose. And from there, you can feed uh, small holes going over into the transfer case and extract the fluid out that way. Needless to say, the next time we're going to undo the fill plug for the transfer case with a breaker bar as well as a 14 millimeter hack socket in my case. But in yours, if you're not removing the cross member, perhaps you will want to use a short Allen key 14 millimeter. 
With the fill plug off, you can see there are just a couple of drops dripping out from the fill hole, so not to worry about getting splash on as soon as the plug is out, just gonna be a couple of drops. And you can see here, I'm struggling to find the right angle to feed the adapter in. With a flexible holes like this, it kind of works, but it's not even like 50 millimeter out. So I try to abort with that idea and use another flexible holes later on, but it was still not working. So here I would advise you to have your finger run over the opening of the fuel plug and see where there is a indented area. That's where you should feed your holes in. And another piece of advice is to use something else that's flexible. The, even this hose right here, the blue one, it's still way too big to feed into the opening. So you will need something like a dipstick tube to be fed into the reservoir. So then you will be able to extract it out. And since the method we're adopting is to siphon the old fluid out, there is no way for us to extract every single drop of fluid in there. So don't expect to extract 0.9 liter, which is what the manual calls for the transfer case. We are just going to extract as much as we can and fill it back up as soon as it runs out from the opening. This was what worked best for me, which is a dipstick adapter hose. I was able to feed it through the indented area and just kind of keep feeding it, keep feeding until it bottoms out that I couldn't feed it anymore. Then I kind of know, okay, it's at the reservoir area, it's touching the fluid. So I was able to extract some of them out. It's not a lot like 300 milliliter, but it's still something. And eventually I just topped up the system and kind of let it overflow for a little bit, kind of diluted it with new fluid and call the job done. The job got a little bit messier when I was trying to dump out the old fluid into the drain pan and just splash everywhere. I didn't want to grease up my camera, so I had to stop recording and moved it away. But what you're seeing right now is the transfer case all filled back up, trying to extract it, everything as much as I can at least, and it's already filled back up. And I said, said it earlier that I let the system overflow a little bit so that I could realistically diluted the fluid inside with new ones. So it should at least be better, even though I was only able to extract like 30% from its capacity. But at least I would say this job is currently completed with, I want to say 50% of new fluid inside and it's still better than 100% old fluid, in my opinion, at least. So what's left for us to do is to button the fill plug back up with a new one, remount your cross member, and then we can leave it in here for another, say, 50,000 kilometers or 35,000 miles. And just like any other bolts that we are buttoning up, we are going to start threading it by hand. We don't want to use any tools in case of stripping out the bolts or the hole. And after it's threaded in by hand all the way, or as much as you can, we're going to bust out our torque wrench and torque the fill plug down, just like any other fill plug on this car. It's going to be 60 newton meters, six zero. After that's done, we're going to switch out the camera angle to be here and remount our transfer case mount or transfer case cross member. We are going to align and push in the main 16 millimeter bolt first. After that's go in, we are going to thread in our 18 millimeter nut on that bolt. You're going to leave everything loose until the final torque up including these E10s that I'm doing. There are five of them, just make sure the long and short ones go into their appropriate places. And like I said, you want to leave them loose before the final torque down. And giving you a torque spec right now, the smaller bolts, which is the E10 bolt, they are all 19 newton meter, and the big bolts going to be 68 newton meter. Remember, since the main bolt is a bolt and a nut design, you'll have to counter hold the other side when you're torquing it down or else it's going to spin forever before you can torque it down. And on here, you can see I would torque down the main bolt first and then I would do the E10s after.
At this point, there isn't really anything else for me to tell you. It's pretty self-explanatory and straightforward. We have to lower the jack and take the jack out from the transfer case and transmission mating point. After that, it's optional for you to fit your splash shield back on because you may want to monitor if there is any leak visually or else like I I was doing in here, I was confident with the maintenance here. I'm sure it wouldn't develop any leak as well. I have a garage to see if I have any leak spots, then I'll go back underneath and check if there's anything wrong. But like I said, I'm confident with the maintenance this time shouldn't be any leaks. So I just refitted it back on, especially if it's raining outside, you may want to do that. At this point, I'm just hand tightening every 10 millimeters that we took off when we're moving the splash shield. I believe there are about 59 thousands of them. And there it is, another basic maintenance about changing your transfer case fluid on your BMW. I hope you liked the video and have enjoyed it. If it was helpful to you, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Your support means the world to me and I hope to catch you in the next one. Cheers!